And uh, a very important point that I want to elaborate on here, um, and you guys can write this down because there's some detail to it that you won't be able to get from the text itself. So when we say al-zahir versus al-mu'awwal, those are two general headings that have a number of different um, types of configurations that they can be found in. And the Sheikh only gives us an example of one, right? So he mentions what? He mentions al-haqiqi, literal, versus what? Al-majazi, the figurative. And that's just one example of the zahir versus the mu'awwal, okay? So if you guys have a sheet of paper or something, you can put a zahir and put a line under it, and then we're going to have a column for what a zahir entails. And we already started with one. We said, from a zahir is a term that is literal, the haqiqi. So that's one aspect of the zahir. After al haqiqi, literal, we have what? We have al am. Say what? Al am. That's another type of term that is zahir or usage that is zahir. Okay? Al am, a general wording or a general meaning. After Al-Am, the general, we have Al-Mutlaq, the absolute sense of a word. That is also Zahir. Okay? So that's number three. We have Al-Haqiqi, the literal, Al-Am, the general, and Al-Mutlaq, the absolute. Excuse me. We also have, after al-mutlaq, we have al-mustaqil, which means the independent. Okay, and what, is, what does that mean, al-mustaqil? It means that if I have a phrase, al-istiqlal is what? If I have a phrase... And I can understand a complete meaning from that phrase, then I understand it according to that complete meaning without any claim of uh, what in English grammatical terms is called ellipsis. Or without what in Arabic is, is called a taqdir. Okay, and we're gonna and I'm gonna come back to that, so 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 don't worry. So we have I'll just go through those four again that fall under the title of Al Zahir. We have what? Al Haqiqi, the literal, Al Am, the general, Al Mutlaq, the absolute, and Al Mustaqil, the independent. Okay, do you guys have that? Mm -hmm. Okay, now on the other, the opposite side of al-zahir, you can make a second column where it's al-mu'awwal. Al-mu'awwal, something that is understood uh, not figuratively, but uh, it's given an interpretation. Or it's understood in a way that is not its apparent sense. Okay. And if you think back to the lesson where we covered this, it's the meaning of a term that uh, in the Arabic is marjuh, right? It's the less probable meaning that is intended, okay? So you can have al-mu'awwal as the second column, which is the opposite of al-zahir. And for each one of these four, there's an opposite, okay? So under the title of al-mu'awwal, we mentioned first under al zahir al-haqiqi, right? So the opposite of al-haqiqi is 
Al-Majazi, figurative. All right. After that, we have the opposite of Al-Am, which is what? Al-Khas, the specific. Okay. For the third, we have the opposite of al-mutlaq, the absolute, which is what? The qualified. The muqayyad. The muqayyad. Yes. And then last but not least, we have al-mustaqil. The opposite of al-mustaqil is what? Al-Mudmar or Al-Muqaddar. Al-Mudmar means uh, ellipsis, Al-Idmar. And uh, Al-Muqaddar means, um, I'm trying to think of a good English translation for Al-Muqaddar. It's almost like a fill in the blank. Um, you can put that in, quote, in, in quotes there. Where you have a phrase and there's a meaning that's not explicitly stated in the wording, but can be understood in certain contexts. Okay? Is, is that clear? Yeah. Okay, and that's called taqdir in Arabic. So you have the opposite of al-mustaqil is al-mudmar and al-muqaddar. Okay, so two different... Um, types of expression there okay so here we have under those two headings the Zahar and the Mu'awwal we have a total of eight different um, types of wordings okay so the principle that we have to have uh, understood as best as we can you know really really um, appreciate the meaning of this is what that first column of Zahar that's always going to be what is understood from a text. All right? That is the default setting for our understanding of the texts of the Sharia. Okay? And the only time that we deviate from those four uh, points under the Zahir is when there is a dalil, when there is an evidence that indicates to us that those four points are not what is intended. Okay? Very important. Extremely important uh, because a lot of times you have people making arguments where they're trying to do a taqsis, for example, a specification without a delil of specification. Or they're trying to do a taqyid without an, any evidence for a taqyid. Okay? So, if you have a position or an opinion and the delil of that opinion is based on a delil that is dhahir, then if someone is in disagreement with that, then the onus is on them to bring the evidence for a figurative meaning, to bring an evidence for a specific meaning, to bring their evidence for a qualified meaning, or to bring their evidence for idmar or uh, taqdir. Okay? Very important. 